Sometimes living in a small home makes sense in order to reduce expenses and ultimately reduce the amount of time that we waste away at work. However, none of this is possible without the well-designed products that make living in a small space just as comfortable as living in a big one. So in this video, I'm going to talk about five home transforming products that may give you that extra space that you've always dreamed of. The absolute key to maximizing space is creating overlapping functionality, with rooms and furniture doing more than just one thing. So thinking about the rooms or furniture that sit unused in your home is a great way to figure out where you may be able to save some space. And one room that's almost always empty during the day is the bedroom. And even though we spend pretty much one third of our lives sleeping, during the day our beds go almost completely unused. And even if you're an avid napper, it's still likely that you choose to do so on the sofa. If you take a look online and look at a lot of micro apartment tours, you'll see that many utilize incredible wall beds that fold away with just the lift of a finger. But realistically, these tend to only be an option if you plan to get them built in, which isn't really that great for renters. And these contraptions usually come with a pretty hefty price tag. Alternatively, storage beds like the one that I designed for our apartment are a good option, which combines your wardrobe and your bed, but they do require to be raised quite high off the ground and they don't magically disappear like a wall bed, so you don't really get any of that added flexibility. One option that I think is often overlooked is to combine your sofa and your bed using a day bed like the ones from Ikea. These ones in particular are especially impressive as they slide out to become a double bed incredibly easily and all it requires is just a pull of a drawer and a flip of a mattress and unlike sofa beds they don't require you to fit sheets every time you need to use them and they actually utilize proper slats and mattresses which make them much more suitable for daily use. All that's really required is to pull out the other half of the bed and flip over the mattress and it's pretty much ready to go. Then you just need to get out your duvet and pillows in the additional drawers which are below and then you'll typically switch these out for a throw and cushions when it's time to put it back into sofa mode. This is a pretty hardcore way to save space as it means that your sofa is probably a little higher than most and you can't put a heavy coffee table directly in front of it because you're gonna need to pull it out. But I can see this being really useful if you're in student accommodation or if you're in a flat share or in a tiny studio apartment as really this five minute routine before and after bed isn't really that bad for the amount of space that you save and it's going to make your space way more comfortable to be in. Granted, this isn't gonna work for everyone and sometimes spending your extra cash each month on renting a proper bedroom is probably worthwhile in most circumstances, but it is a good option for turning your living room or office into that extra guest room that you always wanted or even for turning your guest room into an additional living area. Now, I know for a fact that a lot of people are gonna roll their eyes at this one, as I, like many, have a strong distaste for kitchen gadgetry, as I know that it quickly piles up. But before you judge me, ask yourself, how many times a week do you use your oven? I know for me, it's probably like once every one or two weeks for things like meal prepping or for the occasional pizza. But when I compare that with how many times I use my fridge or freezer, or how many times I use the kitchen sink, it starts to make me question why ovens are so big, as I use these other equally large appliances way more often. I'm pretty convinced that the size of the conventional oven is only really there for the unnecessarily large turkeys that we eat on Christmas and Thanksgiving. But air fryers on the other hand start to make a lot more sense for small homes if you're someone who doesn't eat like Mr. Olympia or you're not planning on hosting your next family gathering. Because air fryers are lightweight and they aren't permanent fixtures, they can be easily moved when you rent and when you have them in your home, they can even be hidden inside of a cupboard for when they're actually needed. But if keeping up with traditions is a must, you may be relieved to hear that they can even cook a whole small chicken or turkey breast because they basically work like a convection oven, but better. Instead of the heat rising to the top shelf and staying there like most ovens, a mechanism inside of an air fryer causes the hot air to circulate around the food, just like oil would in a deep fat fryer, hence the genius term air fryer. Despite this term sounding a bit gimmicky, this is obviously way healthier than deep 
keep that frying and the chances are that you won't be cooking for large amounts of people if you live in a small home anyway. But if you're hardcore enough, you could choose to ditch your oven entirely and just keep one of these in the cupboard, which may give you the extra space that you need in the kitchen for things that you may appreciate and use more, such as a dishwasher or extra cupboard space for food. Air fryers are also just way faster and more convenient than a typical oven and they operate just like a microwave. However, they're also a way tastier way to reheat food as the convection makes everything crispy rather than rubbery and soggy. So we find that we actually use ours all the time. Also, because they're relatively small and they come with a handle, you don't need oven gloves to use them, so they're much safer to take things in and out of too, to the point where some parents even feel comfortable enough to let their children use them. But if you were really to go with an air fryer as a means of saving space and not just for the convenience factor, getting rid of your oven may mean that you need to think about your cooktop too. But you can now easily get integrated induction hobs separately or even use portable induction hobs too that just plug into the wall. So unless you're an avid chef, these can make a lot of sense as they can be stored away until you really need them, which is probably not that often for some city dwellers and students. So as a combination, an air fryer and a portable induction hob can make a great and flexible way to cook in a small home. But they're also flexible and versatile tools, regardless of the size of the the home you live in. Another great space saving product for the kitchen is the countertop dishwasher. Although they're not 100% necessary, traditional dishwashers take up a lot of room and many small apartments don't include them because of it. However, I can't stand washing dishes as I don't really feel like it's a great use of my time. And I don't know about you, but I always end up just as wet as the dishes by the end of it. After eating a big meal, there's little else that I want to do other than sit and vegetate on the sofa, and dishwashers solve this problem for me. Washing the dishes may be an area in which I could use a little more discipline, but seeing that dishwashers use less water and energy than washing the dishes by hand, and they also eliminate the possibility of you leaving something greasy for someone else to find, it does make a lot of sense to leave this job to a machine, but that's only if you have the space for it. It's unlikely that you can fit a full-size dishwasher into most small apartments, or even half-size dishwashers for that matter, but you can now get pretty effective countertop dishwashers in plenty of different shapes and sizes, and these can be placed either directly on your counter or even inside of cupboards, so that you don't really have to commit to a beefy full-size unit. Even if countertop dishwashers don't always fit everything inside of them, these can really take the burden off washing up. And because these are much smaller and lighter than full-size dishwashers, you can easily move them around from place to place when you move, which is perfect if you're a renter. And most of them will fit perfectly under a kitchen sink, meaning that you can connect it up to the water supply and waste relatively easily for a pretty sleek solution. I'd personally go for this option as it's the cleanest, but if this sounds like too much work and expense, a company called Clarstein do a great countertop dishwasher that can be filled by hand using a hole at the top of the machine, which saves you the need of connecting a water supply properly. And the dishwasher can drain directly into your sink using a hose, which means that you actually have a pretty clean and impressive solution that actually requires zero plumbing. Another option for under the kitchen sink is your waste management. For the longest time, wherever I've lived, the waste and recycling arrangement has been pretty subpar, and usually it just looked like a big box for recycling that just piled up over time, paired with an unsightly and cheap bin right in the middle of the kitchen, with the bag hanging out all over the show, which isn't really a good look. But I, just like a lot of people, defaulted to this because it's so hard to find a reliable, streamlined, and affordable solution, especially as the prices of some bins are just insane. Nisha and I now live at our family home together with our daughter, my mum and my brother. And let me know if this is an Asian parent thing, but my mum hates having smelly bins in the house. So she's adamant that small bins which are changed regularly are the way to go. This meant that we had a pretty lackluster solution previously, which some of you commented on, and admittedly, this was a bit of an afterthought in my design for our kitchen. But recently, I stumbled across these awesome bins from a company called Brabantia that save space and are super streamlined. 
These bins fit directly under your kitchen sink, or in any cupboard for that matter, and they can be easily retrofitted with just a few screws. They come in two sizes, 12 litres or 16 litres, and they simply hook up to this clever little system that incorporates an independent hinge inside of the cupboard. You basically just need to put in three screws at the base of the hinge, four at the side, and two for a little guide that fixes to the door, and it leaves you with a really neat system that pulls out whenever you open the cupboard. And because it's not fixed directly to the door, it doesn't put your cupboard hinges under any stress that they don't need. Most other undersink bins that I've seen usually require you to pull out a drawer of some kind, and these bins are typically a pain to change, as they're kind of tricky to pull out or to clean, as they don't tend to have handles, and they usually take up most of the space that's under your sink, leaving you with a ton of wasted space at the back. I can't really believe that I'm getting this passionate talking about bins right now, but these are just so good, as they now make the back of the cupboard accessible, and the handles and lids on the bins let you unhook them and move them around as you please, which makes them way easier and more versatile to change. Finally, a lot of people are now transitioning to working from home, so chances are that you could do with a decent work from home setup. However, if you live in a small space, your dining table laptop setup probably is less than ideal, but then on the other hand, a proper workstation would be just another thing to squeeze into a small home, which may not seem like a possibility for everyone. However, you do probably watch TV in some way or other, so perhaps it's worthwhile turning your TV into a monitor, or even foregoing the TV completely in exchange for a computer monitor. If your TV isn't overly large and it's VESA compatible, it can allow you to put it onto a monitor arm, so you can then position your workspace in close proximity to your sofa, and then angle your screen according to whether you're at your sofa or at your desk. If you're going down the monitor route, you can then hook it up to a super affordable Amazon Fire TV stick, and you're going to have all of your streaming platforms playing directly from your monitor with a handy little remote. Of course, monitor sizes and optimal viewing distances are going to come into play here as to how great of an experience this will actually be, but it's a really affordable way to get the best of both worlds in certain circumstances, and using a Fire Stick is a great way to get all of the benefits of a smart TV without actually having to upgrade, as I know that a lot of smart TVs do tend to get slower over time, and manufacturers don't really choose to roll out frequent updates in an attempt to get you to upgrade. Of course, nothing really beats a big screen, and sometimes using a projector is the way to go, but with the Amazon Fire Stick you can turn pretty much any screen into a proper TV with a remote, which is going to work wherever you go, and it's pairable with Bluetooth speakers too, so you don't really have to worry about wiring up sound. This strategy allows you to stream content from almost every streaming platform, including the exceptional content from CuriosityStream, who are also the sponsors of today's video. Curiosity Stream is made for people who are always on the search for learning something new, with thousands of inspiring documentaries in their library. If you sign up using the link in the description, it's bundled together with Nebula for free, which is another streaming platform built by creators like myself, which is ad-free and offers exclusive bonus content that you don't get on YouTube, like the full conversation that I had with Matt Diavella recently, where we talked about things that you probably won't find us putting on YouTube, like the influence that hip-hop and music had on our lives, and the challenges of being a parent. If this sounds like something that you're interested in, this bundle is only $14.79 for a whole year, which works out to be something ridiculous like $1.23 a month, or like 91p a month if you're here in the UK. And this gets you access to both of these platforms, and it directly supports the creators on there like myself, where you can watch our content completely ad and algorithm free. So if you sign up to Curiosity Stream today using my code and the link in the description, you get this rather insane 26% discount with the Nebula bundle, which is delivered to you through a welcome email that provides you access to both of these incredible platforms. Finally, if you're interested in seeing more content on small homes, make sure that you've checked out my video on five rules for small homes, and the video I made on the cavernous storage bed that we used for pretty much all of our possessions when we lived in our micro apartment, as these offer some alternative insights that I think you might also find useful. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.